All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you all hear me? Yes? All right, well, uh, welcome to uh, my presentation. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Simpson Wedge, or Mark SW for short. And uh, for my presentation, I'm talking about how YouTube helped me to be my autistic self. So, so a uh, little bit of information about me. So, as you know, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, more of a content creator, as some people would say, and I'm based in Leicester. Now, I was diagnosed with autism in 1995, just before my fifth birthday. I've also got uh, dyslexia, meaning I can't read or write as fluently as some people can. So if you discover one or two spelling mistakes in this presentation, yeah, that's my uh, dyslexia. Uh, I'm into the uh, visual genre of things, so I'm into things like uh, filmmaking, photography, image designing, animation, all that stuff. Uh, I'm a very visual person, so to speak. And uh, I'm a, a sci-fi person. Uh, I love sci-fi and fantasy, particularly Jerry Anderson shows. So for those of you who don't know, Jerry Anderson was the guy who created sci-fi shows such as Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, and Space 1999. Now, uh, this is the first time I've done a presentation for the Autism Show, and uh, one of the things I was asked to uh, talk about was uh, about the barriers that were put in my way during my life. And uh, one of the big barriers, of course, is uh, the one that you get at school. I think uh, everyone's experienced this type of barrier. It, it's not just uh, the bullies and the insults, though. That's just one of, part of the barrier. Another part of it is the teachers especially like the primary school teachers because um, uh, some primary school teachers back then uh, I don't know what they're like these days but back then primary school teachers had no understanding about autism or any internal disability I mean, rather than just give me a chance or uh, show more support they just saw me as someone like Tracy Beaker uh, you know, loud, rebellious and someone with behavioural problems who needed to be disciplined so I, I never liked that, so, uh, I, so I mentioned that so, teachers, they can be part of the barrier as well. But uh, it was only after I left school that uh, when I started college and uh, university that things got better for me. The barriers were lifted and uh, it gave me more opportunities. Uh, so I studied multimedia at Leicester College and then I went on to do video and animation production at De Montfort University. And uh, I did, uh, I found the courses I really liked. And at uh, university, I got uh, help from two groups. The first one was a small team from the National Autistic Society. But the other team is a group of people known as Jotters. Uh, for those of you who've never heard of them, it's a group of people who could uh, take notes for you during your lectures or your courses, which uh, can be very useful because as I'm a slow writer, by the time I've written something down, I would have missed like two or three important uh, things. So with the jotters, they would write down the notes for me and I could concentrate on the lecture. So that was a really big help, especially the exams were a big help as well, because uh, I would dictate my answers and they would write it all down for me. So that was like a lifesaver. But uh, it was only after I left university, I ended up facing new barriers the administrations, or admins for short. I think these are barriers that both autistic and non-autistic people have come across, because no matter what you want to do, whether it's something personal in life or something business-wise, there's always things in your way. There are usually three type of problems that are in your way. Technical, financial, and legal. You're always gonna come across these kind of problems, no matter what it is you want to do. So with me, I couldn't get a job, so I had a go at setting up my own business, which I called Words to Pictures. There's the logo there. Uh, the idea was to work with service providers to uh, change the way information was being provided so that uh, people with uh, reading difficulties could understand the information that's being provided to them. The only problem was the idea was either too good or it was, it's just that uh, people wanted my services for either low prices or for voluntary work. Obviously, I couldn't do that, so in the end, I closed down the business. Uh, but the, one of the really big problems, it's the form filling in. 
this is one of the big barriers of all. So, because no matter what you do, you have to fill in forms. Now, some of them are nice and easy, but there are some forms that are very complex and difficult to understand. Even my own mother couldn't understand certain forms. Because the reason is, the people who write the forms, they're using words that either sound similar or words that you're not familiar with. So, to give some examples, uh, words that sound similar, you have abducted, adopted, and adapted. See how they sound similar? You could easily get confused by them. And then words that you're not familiar with. So, or one time, I learned another word for LGBT is sexual orientation. And when I heard the word orientation for the first time, to me, it sounds like another word for movement or positioning. And then I'm like going, okay, why are they asking questions about Rumpy Pumpy? I mean, what's this got to do with PIP? Why are they asking about my sex life? This is weird. Uh, why not just say LGBT like everyone else? I mean, it's common sense. So this gave me an idea. I thought, why can't organizations who make these forms do a YouTube tutorial video explaining why they want these forms filled in? Like explaining how you fill it in. Because it's very simple. All you need is just a camera, someone fills in the form, and you have a voiceover person explaining what the questions are asking, and more importantly, why are they asking these questions. Then you put the video up on YouTube, and then everyone can see it, so it makes it easier to fill in the form. But of course, the organizations, they won't do that. I'm going, well, why not? I mean, to quote Jeremy Clarkson, how hard can it be? See, I got the idea from uh, past experience. Uh, I, I didn't talk much when I was a kid, but I did watch a lot of TV shows. The ones I mainly watched were Thomas the Tank Engine, Fireman Sam, Bob the Builder, and Postman Pat. And there were some episodes in uh, Postman Pat that involved sheep, hence the uh, photo there. And a uh, bit of a story time. Uh, my family were going on a trip to Peterborough, and as we went past the field, there was some sheep in the field. I looked out the window and I went, sheep! So it was from that point that my family realized that because I watched something on TV, I was able to connect something in the real world. I was able to recognize it. So it was from that that um, I watched a lot of the old education programs, as you can see there. I don't know if any of you remember any of those programs from your childhood, but. Uh, they were a lot better than uh, going to school. I learned more from them, and I'm sure a lot of people had to watch them during the pandemic. Yeah, you're very lucky. Very lucky. But uh, it's from this that um, my family came up with a system or a technique to help me, which uh, I've then wanted to pass on to other autistic people. So it's a well-known fact that most autistic people can get scared nervous or anxious if they have to go to a new location because they've never been before and they don't know what to expect so to take a hypothetical example say say you're going to uh, an event at the excel in london but uh, you've got someone there who's never been before what you can do is get some photographs or find some YouTube videos or even a TV program that has that location in question. You may also look for the event it has, especially if it's an annual event. So if it's happened in the past, you can show it to your autistic friend and they'll be able to know what to expect. And you should also include like the traveling method. So hence the bus, plane, train and boat. Like how are they going to get to said location? And the more times the autistic person studies the image, watches the video, it will build up their confidence and they'll be a little bit more relaxed and they'll sort of know where they're going because they've seen it on the TV, they'll be able to recognize it in real life. And this technique can work with uh, other uses as well. Say, for example, when you're preparing uh, for Christmas, because Christmas can be very stressful for people with autism. So what you should do is uh, plan everything out, but do a sort of visual plan, so uh, have pictures of the places you're going to visit for Christmas, uh, what time you're going to have like your parties and your games, which relatives are going to visit you or you're going to visit them. And uh, another good example is when an autistic person is starting school. In fact, uh, are there any teachers in the audience? Any teachers? 
Ah, over there. Right, well, here's a little advice. Um, why don't you make a sort of guide video for autistic children who are starting schools? Do sort of show them the ropes, uh, explain about the scheduling of when you start lessons, and uh, go through all the do's and don'ts. And another thing, do mention the fire drills, okay? Autistic children do get scared of fire drills because they're loud and they can happen unexpectedly. So if they want to put their fingers in their ears, for God's sake, let them. I mean, fire drills are supposed to help people, not scare them. Now, a bit about my uh, YouTube channel. Now, I like to do a variety of videos. I mean, most YouTubers concentrate on one particular topic. But uh, I like to do several, be more open-minded. So, but with my videos, they've actually helped both autistic and non-autistic people. And uh, I put in uh, some of my uh, best, uh, best uh, selections. So, uh, for like when it comes to attending events, because when I go to an event, I feel like a news anchor person or one of those presenters from Blue Peter, you know, doing a special report about the events. And uh, when I'm filming them, they sort of show what uh, people can expect if the events return or uh, maybe what they missed out if they were unable to attend. And I also share like my opinion about them, like what are the good points, what are the bad points, what bits could be improved. So some examples are uh, an audience with the Daleks. So have you, I have a Q&A question with some Daleks. You've got a, a Jerry Anderson event called Super Celebration. And uh, my third option is uh, I compare two events, both dedicated to YouTube, one called VidCon, the other one called Social in the City, and I explain which one is the best, which one needs some improvements. Uh, then the next category is my autistic views, where I share my views of certain situations that have uh, happened or I've experienced. So my best examples are for the Keep Calm, Carry On. That was uh, a saying my granddad was... Uh, very fond of and it came into use during the pandemic so I share my view of the pandemic then uh, the middle one is about uh, 30 years of my life I made that for my uh, 30th birthday and uh, sort of share what I've learned what I've experienced and then finally I talk about uh, my top 10 tips on how to become a youtuber because many other youtubers have done videos like that but uh, this is my version sharing my autistic uh, view on how to be a youtuber and then finally, about helping autistic people, because as an ambassador for the National Autistic Society in Leicestershire, I see it's my responsibility to provide a voice for people with autism when it's difficult for them to speak up, and also to educate those people who are not autistic. So my examples are Poster of Me, which was a viral challenge I created back in 2019, then I did a video about uh, the American uh, autistic support teams, because some of them are good, some of them are not so good. And then finally, my most recent one, I talk about how uh, most autistic people don't like changes and palavers, how it can be really annoying. So, uh, it's from YouTube. From YouTube, I've achieved a lot of uh, achievements, and these are also my future goals. So. Starting with achievements, as I mentioned, I've provided a voice for autistic people and I've also inspired uh, other people, whether to find out more about autism or it, it's to attend certain events or maybe to become YouTubers. And I've shown potential to be a real YouTuber because one day I would love to be a YouTube star, but it's not about the fame and fortune. It's about uh, doing something that uh, as a normal person would find easy, but maybe someone with a disability would find hard. But I want to set an example showing you can achieve something. And uh, because many people think that uh, being a YouTuber is just a hobby, but it can be uh, a professional job if you show some dedication to it. And uh, I've attended many events, many, many events, and it's really helped me to become more social. And I've made lots of friends and uh, I've done some collaborations with them and other YouTubers and I hope that one day I'll be able to do more collaborations with other YouTubers because I've done some collaborations already with uh, another autistic YouTuber called uh, Says Francis. So I've made some contributions to her channel. So my goals for the future, well, obviously keep making more videos. My scheduling is like uh, one or two videos a month depending on like the circumstances and the availability. 
because uh, people have said I should keep doing YouTube because if I had to quit YouTube and uh, try and get a proper job it meant that uh, I could end up being miserable and uh, all the skills that I learned at university all those editing skills that's just going to waste and uh, I want to be maybe self-employed but not in the uh, business company style more like a freelance style so to give an example, I put in uh, Roger Ratcliffe from the Disney film 101 Dalmatians. Now, he doesn't run a business company, but people will hire him to compose music and write songs uh, for their own uses. And when he's not working for a client, he would uh, be writing his own songs, which he would then share to the public and earn a little bit of money. Because um, what Roger would have is an agent, someone to keep an eye and ear out on the uh, business world, to look for potential clients and uh, future events and conventions that would be of interest to uh, Roger. And uh, they would also uh, tackle the, um, those three problems I mentioned, you know, the uh, financial, the legal and the technical uh, administrations that are causing like, the problems, allowing Roger to concentrate on his work. So that's my kind of work style, which I prefer. And uh, also, my other future goal is to get involved in more events and topics that uh, interest me. So it means attending more, maybe more sci-fi events, more uh, YouTube events, and more autistic events, just like this one. In fact, uh, uh, to confess, uh, this is the first time I've uh, done my presentation, because uh, I've done a lot of virtual uh, presentations and uh, took, taken part in panels during the pandemic, but uh, this is the first time I've done one in real life. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I hope you found my, uh, my presentation educational and informative, and uh, if you do have any questions, do raise your hand, and if you have a really big, juicy question, uh, come and see me uh, over there at the end of the presentation, and we'll have a, a good little chat. Thank you. So, do we have any questions? Uh, oh, the lady down there. Oh, we got a microphone coming to you. Hi, I was just wondering what age group is your channel aimed at? Uh, age group, it's um, according to the, um, the uh, graphs on YouTube that you can view, uh, it's very popular with uh, those aged between 20 and 40, but um, to be honest, uh, to give a more accuracy, I would say it, my videos are either PG to 12 rated. That's uh, the best way to describe my uh, channel. Uh, do we have any more questions? Yes, this gentleman down here. Hi Mark, thanks for that. Um, you said that you started your own business and uh, when you were talking to other companies about buying your services, they were either asking for free or for a low price. Why do you, why do you think that was? Um, I think because the idea was too good, because um, just a, a recap, um, the idea was to work with them and change the way the information has been provided. So uh, instead of big long sentences, we turn it into short sentences with some pictures, because there are some documents that do say that uh, service providers need to change the way information is being provided. If it's too complex, then technically it's illegal. And whether they want to or not, they have to change it because it's the law. But as we know, there are some people in government who like to uh, break their own rules. I'm not mentioning any names in particular. Johnson! <coughs> any more questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry, wait, again. sorry, Mark, you're talking about uh, reasonable adjustments there, aren't you? Uh, employers have to make reasonable adjustments for anybody who's got a disability or uh, to do their job. But what I was trying to get at was, um, was it a case that people people didn't understand the value of, of what you were trying to do. That's why they were trying to get your services for next to nothing, really. And do you uh, think that's changing now? Well, I think it is, because, um, as I mentioned at first, because they liked the idea, but uh, they just didn't want to spend too much money on it. But there are other companies who are doing things similar to what I was doing, so uh, I think they're willing to um, cough up a bit more money, because they think they're more professional, and they're... As a self-employed business is seen more like as a, an amateur. So that's probably one of the reasons. Thanks, thanks for that one. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? How are we for time? Yeah. Two minutes. We've got one more question. Yeah, one more question. Anyone? 
Mm, yeah, it doesn't look like it. Okay, well, uh, like I said, if you want to have a big, a, a big chat with me, you're more than welcome to. I'll be hanging around here. So uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the autism show. And uh, as I say on my channel, over and out. <laughs>